Hello and welcome back to part two of chapter 19, uh, chromosomes and cell division. So we were talking through the phases of mitosis, PMAT. Prophase was the first one. The DNA condensed and became visible as chromosomes. And then in the second step, metaphase, they got organized and they aligned in the middle with identical copies um, connected to each other. So now in anaphase, we're splitting those and one version of each copy is going to each side. So copies of each chromosome <coughs> excuse me. And you can see that they're attached to those spindle fibers at the middle. So basically it's like the middle is getting pulled faster and the ends just kind of dangle and they make these little V's. Right? So they pull these going to each side. Okay. And then our last phase of PMAT T stands for telophase. Don't phone it in now. Okay. So in telophase, we've got the DNA to each side. And so now we're going to start going back to how the cell is in interphase. So we're going to put a new nuclear envelope or membrane around each nucleus. And then we're going to start to spread that DNA out again so we can start reading it and using it. So this is a lovely view. We've got all of our DNA. It's darker. It's in one spot. But you can't really see individual chromosomes now. And it's starting to reform the nuclear envelope. So the other part that we haven't really spoken about too much is cytokinesis. So the rest of the cell division of the cytoplasm, so all the organelles there. And so you'll have the spindle fibers wrapping around and squeezing. They form cleavage furrows and um, eventually they'll separate everything. Um, your book says this starts in, in telophase, but I've also seen it that it starts at the end of anaphase. So let's review. First, our cells functioning normally are in interphase. You can see the nucleus. You can't see what's going on inside there, though. Next, in prophase, that DNA starts to condense. Ooh, it's not a great circle. I'm blocking some of it. So you can see those little squiggles. They're not or organized. So early prophase, you can start to see them starting to condense later you can see them fully condensed. That nuclear envelope is dissolving, so they're going to start spreading out. And then in metaphase, those identical copies line up in the middle on the metaphase plate. And then spindle fibers are going to pull a copy of each chromosome, and they're going to split in anaphase. So it's like a dance. Earlier anaphase, they're closer together. Later, they're further apart. And then telophase, they start to reform the nuclear envelope. That chromosome starts to uh, spread out again. And cytokinesis, we fully separate all the rest of the organelles. Cool. So what we are looking at up here are whitefish blastula slides. Now we're looking at an onion root tip. So onion roots are growing, right? Roots grow quickly. So we're going to have more cells than average dividing. And cell plants, uh, plant cells are pretty cool because they have a cell wall that makes them square. So if we were in class, you would be looking at this under the microscope. And so each of those squares, like here, here, or rectangles, each of those is a different cell. And they can be not dividing or they can be dividing. So let's look at a few different cells. I'm going to outline one, two, three, four, five cells. And I want you to pause it and see if you can identify which phase of mitosis each cell is in. Okay. So let's look through these together now. So this first one here 
You can see a couple dark spots in the nucleus. Those are going to be the nucleoli where we're making um, ribosomal RNA, but you can't see individual chromosomes. So that's interface, the cell functioning normally. Whereas in this cell, you can see those specific squiggles, but they're still in a circle. So that's going to be prophase. Um, earlier prophase, you'll just start to see them condensing and thickening. Um, earlier prophase here, that's prophase. Maybe this one, you can just start to see some squiggles occurring. Um, here, they're starting to condense. Okay. And then metaphase, they line up in the middle. That's a pretty metaphase, metaphase, metaphase. Um, and then they start to split to each side, anaphase. Earlier anaphase, later anaphase. And then here we've got telophase. There's no solid cell wall yet. We've got dark um, condensed areas that are reforming the nucleus. So that's telophase. Um, that's probably the best telophase there, yeah. Most of the cells, though, are in interface, right? Because on average, cells are going to be growing and not dividing. Okay. okay. Great. So now let's look at meiosis or meiosis, the creation of haploid gametes. And we've talked about these terms already. The eggs and sperm are the gametes. They're haploid. They only have one copy of each chromosome. And we form them by meiosis. So there's two meiosis divisions, meiosis one and meiosis two. Um, technically, there's a mitosis to start it. And so, okay, so mom chromosome one, dad chromosome one. In mitosis, you make identical copies, line them up at the middle, and one copy of each goes to the new cell. In meiosis, chromosome one, chromosome one, you make a copy of each. So these are homologous chromosomes. And then when you make a copy and put them next to each other, they're called sister chromatids. Okay, so mom one, mom two, oh, mom one, mom one, dad one, dad one, right? They're sisters, they're identical copies basically. So instead of going above and below, they go next to each other. And that middle even crosses over and you can switch the DNA. I can't really switch my fingers, but you know what I mean? So in meiosis one, what happens is we separate those homologous chromosomes. So mom and dad go the opposite directions. And in meiosis two, we don't make any new DNA, uh, but then we'll separate those. We'll separate the sister chromatids. Okay. And so then at the end, You'll have four non-identical copies, and the reason they're not identical is because that crossover. Right? Let's look at that on the next slide. So meiosis one, we separate the homologous chromosomes. Right? There's mom, sister chromatids, there's dad. We cross over. They can exchange DNA. And so then meiosis one, separate those. And in meiosis two, separate the sister Chromatids. And now we've got four, one, two, three, oh, I'm using my mouse, it's not very good, four um, non-identical cells. Exciting. So let's review the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis, there's one set of PMAP. We make identical copies, split them, two new cells are identical. Meiosis, those homologous chromosomes, we make copies. We've got our sister chromatids. We separate homologous chromosomes, then the sister chromatids, and we've got four daughter cells. And in males, all of those will become sperm. In females, only one of those will become the egg. And they'll only finish meiosis too if it gets fertilized. So what can go wrong during meiosis? You could not separate the chromosomes exactly like that. So non-disjunction is where you don't separate them correctly. So you could have a trisomy or a, mon a monosomy. So basically you have three copies of a chromosome or only one. Uh, so Down syndrome, you've got three copies of chromosome 21. It's a trisomy. Uh, you can also have this occur with 
uh, sex cells or sex chromosomes. So trisomy, Klinefelter syndrome, XXY, more male characteristics, but breast can occur, oftentimes infertile. And Turner, you only have one X. So here's Turner syndrome um, and the characteristics. Shorter, low hairline, folds of skin. Um, what's really interesting is that in each female's uh, cell, usually only one X is active and the other is not. So it's very interesting that not having one can cause such variation in development. Okay, so this is our first chapter on genetics. I'll see you back in the next one soon.